Hey, I'm Friendly Baron, and this is the post that started the speedrunning community in GTA 5. In this video, I want to give an overview about how the early strats for the GTA 5 speedrun were found, and how many of them are still used today. Back in 2013, the forums on speeddemosarchive.com were the main source for speedrunning information, and this post made by Lincoln Ito a day before the game's initial 2013 release was the first on the board to discuss GTA 5. The next few posts discuss some early aspects of the game, mainly the usage of taxis and mission skipping. Taxis can be used to instantly skip a drive in single player, which many saw as a not so fun way to play the game, as it removes lots of the driving, while others saw it as acceptable in the game because it's pretty driving heavy already. Mission skipping can be used to skip part of a mission by failing three times, basically allowing you to skip every mission within a few minutes, so with these allowed, the run would have become a mess of just suicide over and over again. In Qubit's message here, he first suggests a classic percent idea. This is a category that comes from the GTA 4 speedruns, where the idea is that you play the game more like a normal player would as a fun category, rather than the true fastest time. The next concrete mention of this comes from Decap on page 4, where he lists a classic percent run not using mission skips, no taxis, and doing the third way ending as it's seen as the canon ending to the game, along with a time of 8 hours and 59 minutes though he told me that his first full run was actually 9 hours and 2 minutes. That's not on the forums though, we'll come to the lack of documentation later, and for comparison, the runs today are nearly 3 hours faster than that. Back a few pages though, some initial theory crafting is being done, with runners talking about possibly needing money during the playthrough to buy weapons or vehicles. We've ended up not needing much of that, as you passively gain enough money through the missions anyways to buy what's needed in the story. This post by Mr. Longhair is a real big moment, on the 24th of September just one week after the release of the game. Some early strats, such as killing the second dog during Chop to save time are introduced, as normally Chop would walk over to the dog to have, um, relations, and that takes about 20-30 to 30 seconds to get his attention back. He lists the first few missions we do in the run, though in a very different order, but already has a few strats. Hitting over the hobo during repossession skips Lamar from talking to him, and we still do this. Passing by the Gardener and Complications in some form is mentioned, and that mission will see lots of progress later. This post also raises questions. In Franklin and Lamar, he wonders how picky the AI will be but doesn't yet see any way to improve this drive, while today we take a very different route to get pushed and cut way off the normal path to get this mission done faster. In case in the Jewel Store, wondering about jumping off the roof is mentioned, which was found later to have a great effect as landing near the doors you barely take any damage at all. Instead of tackling the whole game at once, he is focusing on just getting the unlocking Trevor, and the idea of a race to that section among the runners is suggested, and a few agree it sounds like a good idea. Five days later, the race is organized and ran. Get used to seeing Decap on top as he's very dominant early on in the game for a while. Speedruns Live was a commonly used site back then for runners to compete against each other in real time, as well as once you did races for long enough the site would list you on the Live Runs page, giving you some promotion for your stream. The naming here says beat the jewel store job, even though this also means Trevor Percent. The reasoning for this is that the category contains all the missions that have to be done up until Trevor is available to play, as seen on this chart here. He is unlocked in Mr. Phillips, so the jewel store job is the mission before that. Talking of naming it Jewel Percent has floated around for a while, but the Trevor Percent name has been around the longest, so it just stuck. The percent in category names comes from how much of the game is completed, as most runs are either 100%, where you finish basically everything in the game, or any percent, where you finish any amount of the game necessary just to get to the end. So other categories keep the percent name to make it clear they are speedruns. Another big post from Mr. Longhair, and this one is interesting because it's almost half still used and half no longer used. He mentions taking the white 9F instead of the red Rapid GT in the first city mission, which we no longer do as it's found just to be as fast now with better driving, so no need to run farther for the 9F. Being careful with the stamina in Daddy's Little Girl and going straight for the pier is still done in the biking section, as well as shooting the enemies off the jet skis right away. In marriage counseling, a tip is given on how to shoot the pursuers by using the cover of the pillars. On console, it was much harder for them to get the aim down on these guys when they hid behind their doors and cars. Only a few months later, that would be changed to even something faster. 
Green and Link here post the first strats for Crystal Maze, involving going in the back way and using Trevor's power, going down to the basement then fighting your way out while pouring gasoline, instead of slowly fighting your way inside in the first place. Lobrosa next posts about Crystal Maze, a new faster way, just ignore the enemies except for the last one and do a mission fail after the can. His video no longer exists, so here is Decap doing the same thing later on. They would fail the mission to despawn lots of enemies while pouring the gas, which is abusing the checkpoint system, but not skipping it in the mission fail style. Basically, once the game sees that you are far enough along, it doesn't respawn the enemies that it thought you cleared out already. Currently, we still run inside with the power the same way, but instead just run right back out throwing a grenade down instead of failing then pouring gas, which was found by Velocinator in late 2015 once playing on BC, and is a favorite of many runners and viewers still today. Another post from Green Link, now in early October of 2013, where he discusses using Trevor's power to stop fall damage during the wrap-up to get down to Davy quicker, and they did this for a while. This can't be done on PC though, as it now cancels the power and you can't avoid the damage, so we use the parachute instead. The same strat was used elsewhere on the run, like where Decap uses it to fall off the crane here. Coming back to the Marriage Counseling Shootout, this is the first time a way to skip the spawns of Madrazo's goons was found. I covered this in my 2014 vs 2019 episode, but this is the footage where Decap first discovered it was possible at all, simply by driving directly across the sidewalk. He was rather excited as he had spent Hell three yeah. to four hours working Hell with his yeah. chat to get this Hell single yeah. trick working. Hell yeah! We in there! We are in there! A post from Annie O first talks about blowing up Michael quickly after Daddy's little girl. At the end of the mission, you are located at the end of a pier, and a death will send you to the hospital in the middle of the city, closer to the next mission. However, they had to visit the ammunition store before the mission to get these grenades, where they also picked up armor as dying was more common on consoles. We'll come back to how this has evolved later on. A post by Grinder and then Decap first talk of the gauntlet missions at the end of the game. Usually you find these gauntlets by going to the locations Lester emails you. It was found you could just buy the gauntlets and deliver them from Franklin's garage instead. Decap is at first apprehensive of this, but by 2014 it is being used as the main strat, and remained that way until June of 2019 where Justice, Dark Viper, and Rillo work together to find a way to duplicate the delivery of one of the gauntlets by pushing the other one into the corner to trick the game into thinking you are delivering that gauntlet again, with Rillo then improving on that just a few weeks ago in August of 2019 to dupe two of the gauntlets, meaning only one needs to be purchased and driven over to the garage. I'll have that full new dupe system covered in a future strat update video. Eight months after the game's release, we see a post from Torix for the first time. Torix is one of the oldest runners of the game still playing today, so basically five years within the speedrun. In his post, he speaks about how the current world record was just above seven hours, and says the time should easily be below seven hours, maybe even six and a half, which was a pretty accurate prediction as the speedrun has come down just about two hours in time since he made that post five years ago. This post from Snipey discusses a few of the character switches, mainly on Trevor and Franklin. Posts like this first thinking about how the route the missions were valuable, as Trevor can have lots of odd, random switches around the map where he'd be naked on an island or a mountain, or being chased by the cops. Luckily, most of these bad switches aren't encountered in the run much now, and we are able to make use of Trevor and Franklin's consistent spawns around their home bases in the middle to late parts of the game. Conversation between Snipey and Torix peters out by late June of 2016, and then there's one more post all the way in September of 2016, left unanswered, Though I could tell him from my Casual vs Speedrun series now that the missions by the book, Crystal Maze, and Architect's Plan tend to have the biggest difference in time from a casual. So that basically covered the first few months of GTA 5 speedrunning. Runners were making some initial starts, still getting into their first runs, and doing races, mainly the hour and a half or so long Trevor percent. That moves this video into its second topic, which mainly is going to cover the lack of documentation and strats being written down during the 2014 to basically 2018 period of this game. Looking on the Speedrun's live racing page, Decap, Rydog, Matt, now known as Matty, and Fingerquick were doing tons of races and slowly lowering their times thanks to improved strats and getting better at the game. Dottes was also running at this time and competing for world record and classic percent with Decap. They traded back now and then, though Dottes supposedly had an advantage until PC release since he had a PlayStation with an SSD in it. I spoke to many of these runners over the past week about their experiences at the time, mainly in the 2014 and 2016 times. Instead of using forums like before, they had an IRC chat, basically an old school chat room like your Discord today, 
and voice chats to collaborate and share strats. And many strats, when found, would be learned by word of mouth or by being posted in others' live streams. Like, hey, I saw another runner doing X thing here instead of what you just did. Records and the history of these new strategies was not kept like it is today. However, they were able to share a few highlights with me. In Hood Safari, instead of doing the large shootout and waiting for Franklin and Lamar's NPCs to move up with you, Jungle Cats found this strat we still use where by running ahead you can pass the checkpoint that triggers the next part of the mission which then fails you for being too far away. But upon respawning, the player and the NPCs have been moved up to this section anyways, saving probably 20-30 to 30 seconds over doing the slow shootout. On the long stretch, it was found that if you did the interior shootout fast enough, you could get outside without the cops being on you, which would allow the player to drive back to Franklin's house right away. And this would save like 20 seconds if able to be done today. However, it seems this only ever worked on PS3, not even Xbox 360, and has not been replicated on newer gen platforms. This clip from Rydog of him finding this is a great example of how strats were shared. He was in a voice chat with Decap and a few others while this happened, which instantly shared the strat to everyone else instead of really having it written down. At the end of Daddy's Little Girl before Case in the Jewel Store, the runners in 2014 were using grenades they bought to blow up at first, but a runner named Cyber was using the rocket launcher that was in the story mode DLC to kill himself and teleport to the hospital. This caused a bit of a drama as not everyone thought the DLC should be used. As well, once the game came out on PC, the firework launcher was no longer put into the player's inventory. Rydog and Kyle Does It, who holds many of GTA 4's world records, worked out to find another option, and came up with a strat we now use today to use the propane tank on this hot dog cart to kill ourselves, having exerted stamina or drowned a little bit beforehand during the mission to lower the character's health. Decap initially did much of the initial routing and strats during the Classic Percent speedrun, and he credits Nord for finding many of the death warps we do between missions. And Decap held world record training it back and forth with Dot Days throughout 2015, before leaving the game after doing just a few runs on PC, where Dot Days then held world record for most of 2016, and he's credited with improving the driving routes taken during many of the missions. This Google Docs leaderboard holds the current world record progression for all GTAs actually, being maintained by Odysic with help from some other community members, as the early runs of many of these GTA games predates the current speedrun.com history. Around the time of speedrun.com being created, it became the main leaderboard for GTA 5 where all times are kept today. However, the forums on that page were still rather inactive, with only one page of discussion covering two years, as the live chats for both text and voice were more popular to use and share info on. Sadly, there was a fair amount of drama back then, for example, with runners being so unhappy with the rules of Clax% percent, they started doing runs along with different criteria, such as ending B, and some posts are straight up deleted over this. But basically for a while this caused people to form smaller groups, and you could really only learn strats by watching the runs of others or word of mouth. Eventually the drama died down and people got back to doing runs. Maddie was running actively at this time, and found a skip during Friends Reunited where by going wide around these bushes, you could avoid the forced walk and long camera cutscene that normally happens here. The spawn skip we talked about in Marriage Counseling so much had stopped working for PC, and Torx in 2015 found the strat where we went perpendicular over the road twice which was used for the next four years until the more recent optimizations worked on and finalized by source shown in my strat update video were found. Another strat Torx found, by accident, was the save warping strat we now do. While testing something else, he was holding down the button to switch characters while loading, and warped back to Michael's safe house upon doing so. It was eventually realized you could do this consistently with holding the button and being sent to that character's safe house each time, which we now do a handful of times every run. This is a common way strats are found. Some people find stuff by accident and improve upon it, or sometimes people go looking for something that needs improved. Torx found a strat in Three's company this way where we fly tight between the buildings on purpose. He was looking to improve this section and said, it simply seemed obvious to try to shake them, force them in the crashing and it worked out well. This saves about 20 or more seconds not having to wait for Michael or the player to shoot the helicopters. At the same time, Torx was still learning parts of the run too, and in complications, there was a way to get Michael out of the backseat and begin talking to Franklin early. All you have to do is try and get back out of the car manually. He didn't know how that was done and just had to ask the other runners, and we aren't sure who actually found that right now, and it just kind of shows how undocumented everything was. 
Now coming in the early 2017, Torx was on top of the leaderboard but Dark Viper was coming up quick and they began battling for world record for basically a year, trading it back every month or so. Viper was known for doing many hardcore strat finding streams, coming across things by accident or taking suggestions from his chat. One example is this voice line skip during Trevor Phillips Industries, which allows the Asian businessmen to begin getting out of the freezer right away. Viper found you could do this by walking backwards and holding the aim button, and it's been improved on twice, once by using Trevor's power to interrupt, and nowadays he's found you can just call a taxi and the phone call interrupts the voice lines. Around this time, things were close to getting more organized, and the GTA Speedrun Discord was created in early 2017 as well. While scrolling through the past two years of that Discord, many strats are hidden under mounds of off-topic conversations, and I was often met with the video unavailable page while trying to research clips. Even then, like the previous Viper clip for the voice line skip, many of the short clips that still exist on Twitch don't give the full story on how a strategy was found, who suggested it, what was the way it was tested, and what methods may have failed, as full Twitch VODs are deleted after 30 to 60 days automatically. Many of the strats have that interesting story because they come from viewers. Rollo, who's now known as a powerhouse strat finder in his own right as well, found his first strat with sleep mode in the game. While messing around on the phone before he was doing speedruns, he came across the sleep mode option that was added to PC. Sleep mode is now used to block in-game phone calls from coming in when we don't need them, as most of them don't relate to the main storyline besides a few, and those calls block the game from progressing. This happens because annoyingly, many of the game's missions must be started through text message being received. Another cool story is how the hospital warp was discovered. This video from 2015 is one of Decap's few PC runs. At the end of the mission, he is teleported away from the landing zone to the nearest hospital, which adds about 30 to 40 seconds to his run, as this location is notorious for not spawning vehicles. This would occasionally happen to the runners, getting sent to the hospital when unwanted for nearly four more years. Now in 2019, Rillo was watching Burhak do a run, and Burhak said, damn, I think this is going to warp me to the hospital, because he realized that if you die while doing the checkpoint skip during Nervous Ron here, you would then be teleported to the hospital after. So Burhak understood how it worked and tried to avoid it, but Rillo built on that by taking the info and letting others know, and it was tested everywhere else in the game to see where it may be useful, the most iconic being Blitzplay where we blow up Michael with an RPG then die as Franklin. This teleports Michael back to the city from being all the way out in the hills right away after the mission ends. Staying in 2017 a bit longer, Burhack, who is now the world record holder in almost every category, was learning the run. He said he'd watch streams, basically Dark Viper and Torix, as they were both basically doing daily runs, and take notes, practice, and then eventually started doing runs himself. Most every new strat was posted on Dark Viper or Torix stream, so you had to watch at least one of them to keep up, and viewers would often help share strats around between the runners. This video doesn't even touch all the failed strats, likely info lost to the ages unless the runners have info about them to dig up. If any other runners remember some old stories or anything, I'll try to tweet out those videos or posts about them while this topic is hot. The speculation and failed strats may not be as interesting, but they are as important as a successful find to learn about the game. Much of the old conversations were cluttered with ideas and chatter, but since late 2018, GTA 5 speedrun has moved to a new Discord now, so all future strats are getting way better documented. Instead of one channel that handles everything, we have channels for general discussions, channels for strat discussion, and then the confirmation channels, where only the confirmed strats are posted to make the newest finds easy to keep track of. Over the years, easily over 100 people have been involved in the improvements of the way the GTA 5 speedrun is done. Findings and contributions vary by person, some bigger than others for sure, and it's a community effort that makes this game fun to be involved in, as everyone works together to change the strats. Over the course of talking to runners this week, I received a similar sentiment from all of them, though not everyone may agree with this. Finding a new strat is exciting, and it's fun to share it and use it yourself, or see the runners do it on stream, especially a new world record. But as time passes, that strat just becomes part of the run, adopted by the community, kind of like contributing to a Wikipedia article. As the last strat becomes the new normal, that pushes the drive to find something new yet again, which helps to continue lowering the time of the speedrun. My aim with this kind of video, and my strat update and risky strat videos, is to make a sort of Wikipedia article that tracks what's been found, and brings out the story of who found it, if they worked with anyone, and what failed, as that kind of info has not been saved in previous years available as many would like it to be. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, I've made plenty similar like it, and I'm always trying to improve on them, so any feedback, even if critically constructive, is welcome. 
If you like those videos, a subscription to my channel helps me keep creating more videos and will make it a bit more likely you will be able to see them too. If you want even more GTA 5 speedrun content, there is a bajillion links in the description of many other runners, YouTubers, and the place you can go to get more info about the GTA 5 speedrun community.